and we're live. Good evening, whiskey brothers and whiskey sisters, and welcome to episode 16 of the Canadian Whiskey Journeys Whiskey Review. I'm Dolph, I'll be your host tonight, and these cats over here are Blair Phillips and Devin DeCalgemo, co-authors to this lovely book right here, The Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries, The Portable Expert to Over 200 Distilleries, and The Spirits They Make. And Father's Day is coming up in, is it two weeks, gentlemen, or three weeks? Three weeks, 20th of June. This is what you want to get. This is the book your dad wants. I'll tell you because I've got two and I'm a dad. But <laughs> as you mean, we're, we're continuing our Canadian whiskey journey with a review of a very special bottle today. A very, very special bottle today. It's the Alberta Scotch Society's 10th year anniversary special bottling from Two Brewers. And I, I'm a Two Brewers fanboy today. I, I've got the shirt. I'm, I'm drinking the beer to cleanse my palate. And uh, I'm really happy, really, really happy with this tram. I'm not going to give any tasting notes today. I'm going to leave that to Davin and Blair because I'm too partial, way too partial. But hopefully they'll tell you an honest impression of mine. So as you may know, I'm the president of the Alberta Scott Society. There's kids everywhere. Is that my house or yours? Blairs. I am the president of the Alberta Scott Society. I wanted to have a fantastic bottle for our 10th anniversary as a society. And 2020 came and it went with no big celebration. So COVID changed plans for a lot of different societies and we were no different. But at least we got this. This became available finally at the end of December 2020 to mark our 10th anniversary. It, it, it's fantastic. Our local hero, uh, if you've seen the show ever before, you've seen Dave Gartner, Yukon Dave. He brought me a whole bunch of samples. I tasted the samples, but it became clear really quick which one I wanted, and that was Cask 169. 169 at the time, it, oh, I'm not going to say too much. I, here's a little bit. Davin, I'll ask you the question. You've been to Two Brewers. I've never been there. Can you give us just a little bit of a lowdown on what you saw when you were there? Well, it's just a really Fabulous place. Now, they started out as a brewery, you know, Yukon Brewing. And, uh, you know, they really, I think that they they pretty much own the north and northern Alberta, too, as far as beer goes. And uh, But, you know, beer really is a seasonal uh, a product. And in the, in the wintertime, people don't drink a lot of beer or not as much beer. So they uh, put in some stills. Once the just the business was really well established, they put in a, a still, a, a, a Carl still, and started um, <clears throat> distilling spirit. You know, when they and they're using the you know malts from the from the beer. You know, so it's just some really interesting things. You know, blending different malt spirits together as mature as mature whiskey and. Uh, <clears throat> This kind of keeps everybody working in the wintertime, but because it's a brewery and a very uh, a well uh, a very uh, well known brewery, they didn't they didn't feel any pressure to release whiskey. So they waited and waited and waited. And I think the first uh, time they kind of decided, you know, we maybe we should uh, see what this stuff tastes like and and start selling it, it was about seven years old. So the whiskey each year gets a little bit older. But as you know, um, you know, whiskey improves dramatically over time no matter how it's matured it, time really is the is the key ingredient and uh, so they've they've got some just wonderful things now they've got this still but you know they have one of their brew kettle sets so they can put a a, a head on that as well and use that for a for a stripping still you know and so it's, it's really it's an awesome place and, and whitehorse cosmopolitan we had dinner at antoinette's an authentic caribbean uh, restaurant in the heart of a town of forty thousand people <laughs> They got a bar, bars everywhere. None of them have the word bar written on them because who wouldn't know? You know, of course it's a bar. You know, so, what's going to say? Do they call it a saloon? Is that what's going on? No, so, bar. It's, it's, they don't call it anything. It's, everybody knows that's a bar, and there you go. So, anyways, they make some wonderful whiskey, and I have to say that Cask One Sixty Nine is really quite a remarkable one, Dolph. Thank and uh, whoever whoever selected this for your club tasting has oh. got a. A pretty good, a pretty good palate, or probably they're married to someone with a really good palate. Something like that. One of those. Things. Uh, Blair, do you remember the story about them putting together their still? Like they got it right before. Was right before it Easter? Easter? Yeah. I think over Easter weekend, or or just before that, they uh, 
they, they built it quite quickly. Uh, a matter of hours, I think. And you hear stories of these of these um, distilleries spending weeks and weeks and weeks and ripping their hair out, looking at these awful instructions. And and there's uh, yeah, the two bird guys just you know put it together like it was like a five year old Lego, Lego set or something. Well, they're both engineers, right? Although I think one was an electrical engineer. Mm. That would come in handy. Yeah, I think so. I, I, right. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's quite. Uh, <laughs> Quite it, cool it, that they've managed to do that so quickly. It's exactly what we want. They're fantastic. I love them. I love the guys. We've had them on our show before. Uh, Dave from Two Brewers is on with me with the Canadian Whiskey Journey on Saturdays. And he got me exactly what I want because he knows my taste. I like single cast, cast strength, non-chill filter, no color. But I wanted the PDS they had. And this is the only bottle they've ever put out that's 100% so because they they single malts but they're they're still blending what they want in there but i wanted 100 percent pure right out of there so that's 25 to 50 ppms uh 58 for the cast strength that we have and at what point before the 25 came out which we'll review blair and i fairly soon in the future uh this was the oldest expression that was ever bottled so up until that point it was uh i i do have to say though Thank you to Kingston Wine Market in Calgary because without them, I couldn't have done it. Because our society, we've got 70 members and you need to be able to sell about 200 bottles when, when you buy a cask. And Davin, did you have the same thing when you bought yours or got your cask from, uh, who was it? Crown Royal, that's it. Did you have to well, they, sell 200 or did you get to keep them all? Th yeah, they just gave it to me, the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. it pays to be you, Davin. It's pretty good. We couldn't do it. So, uh, we couldn't sell 200 or pay for it right off the bat because we're we're 10 years old, but we kind of restarted things about a year and a half ago. So we yeah. didn't have the, the money to pay for it all. So we sold as much as we could, but working with Andrew Ferguson, Kansas and Maury Market in Calgary, he said, whatever you can't sell, we'll take the rest. And he's got the rest now. So anything that's left out there, Andrew has got it. So you're going to have to phone Kingston Wine Market to see if you can get one of these special bottles. So, and uh, yeah, that's it. That's where you're going to buy it. So like I said, I'm going to say one comment about it. The nose is peaty, but for me, the palate hit you even more peaty. So, and usually I get the opposite. Usually I smell peaty up front in anything. And then it, I'm let down a little bit by the palate. Mm -hmm. This one, the palate just bang. I loved it. So what do you gentlemen get on the nose? <laughs> Go ahead, Bert. <laughs> well, like, yeah, you say the, the peat and the campfire and all that stuff, but there's a lot of finesse in this whiskey as well. And, and one of my gripes with, with some Isle of Whiskeys is that it tastes like you're like bobbing for bandages in a campfire. It's just so like <laughs> gross, right? But this one has there's a lot of finesse uh, and balance within this. There's a nice fruitiness and, a, and, and some really – Nice sweet notes, and it, it really balances out. There's a little bit of a brightness. Um, it's not all dark and depth. It's, there's there's a lot of different layers that uh, that that turn into a bit of a complex beast. Nice. Yeah. Did you get some fl some floral notes on it? You, you uh, it's, it's 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 like you know violets don't have very much smell, or you, maybe they're like almost almost like talcum powder or something like that, but it smelled you know but but it was oh, more like, yes. not, more like I can go for that. that yeah and, and, and there's something in there that's like it's like apple wood or something like that you know those sweet fruity woods when you when you you split them open and there there there's that few seconds when you get that that, yep. that, that, that sweetness coming off. off. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, I guess not. I find this is really quite a, a complex uh, whiskey. Of course, you know, PD whiskeys do tend to mature uh, in, into to think to whiskeys that are really quite um, well, quite different from year to year. But I like that. Now, yeah. now that you say talcum powder, that's jumping right out. Yeah. It's Those like, of us that uh, remember the babies yeah. and changing the diapers, it just, yeah. It, <laughs> it, it was it was a perfect. Oh. Well, Blair's closer to, to the baby diapers than yes. I am right now, but I'll soon be wearing them, I think. so. Yeah, I'm wearing mine right now, so <laughs> there you go. We don't want to get up. We're done. We're staying right here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's some kind of fruitiness. I don't know what it is, but anyways, it's... Uh... 
<laughs> matured <laughs> completely in first use, char number three, so their traditional char, and oh, barrel 2013, and I have the date, uh, October 17, 2013, for the extra information. So it's seven years old or eight? Eight, eight, eight. years old, as of October 17th. I go. Mm -hmm. mm. It's lovely. Well, what did some of the other samples taste like, Dolph? Because I think this is a really a very special whiskey. Well, we had the PX Cass, so we had that. And, well, there was eight different samples. There was six, and then Dave brought another two afterwards just to see if I was really sure. But this okay. one came out. There was three peated expressions that I liked quite a bit, and I think there was four in all. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one just didn't seem to have enough oomph. And Blair talks about the Band-Aid. I'm, I'm okay with chewing on Band-Aids and just chewing on the fire. I'm okay with that. This wasn't, um, it wasn't the strongest peat, but it was the, the best. We talk about balanced peat, and I, I hate it when people say that because I don't know if they know what the hell they're talking about when they say it's balanced. But the sweetness with the peat, it all came together. Yeah. Blair, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. I think it's, it's really, I think it's quite balanced. I think it, so. uh, yeah. yeah. It got, it's got three corners, you know, that, that all seem to, you know, it, not, none of them really overpowers the other. So it's got the peatiness yep. and it's got that fruity floral note in there, but it's also mm -hmm. got the, the this, um, a sweet, this like, like fruit sugars or something like that. The sweetness, I think it's yeah. really quite great. I uh, have a glass that I, I tasted this earlier today and this one's dry now. I saved it and it's, that is, that is bandaged it's antiseptic. And Davin's got that. He's explained that to us before, but what Davin does is he'll, he'll let it dry and sometimes overnight clean it up the next day and take a sniff of the whiskey after it's evaporated and it's dry and you, you get certain notes in that dryness that you don't pick up when it's in this original form and uh you're saying band-aid so okay like yeah like real like real um antiseptic good like the, the stuff you might get um lefroy yeah yeah oh you think lefroy because i think lefroy too okay uh, yeah I, I got that too you know you know i find that it's a it's a different kind of, of peat in lefroy okay. and it's uh and it's got some of that sweetness as well. Yeah. Um, so I find I found that when I tasted it, though, it was quite hot on the tip of my tongue, pleasantly hot, I should say. But when it goes back into your mouth, it turns more into a, a glow, you know. And it and it feels yep. like that. And it just takes forever to settle down and then slowly fade away. And uh, honestly, I think if you if you have a sip of this before you go to bed. You're still going to taste it when you wake up in the morning. I, I double dog dare you to try that tonight. I, I will triple dog dare you. I'll do it. I'll do it with a single dog with the double trip on that. I'll do that. Okay. And, I, uh, I quadruple dog. Uh, you. I agree. It, it had a long finish, but, but it has more of a, it's got a longer finish now. And the sample that you have is mine that's been open for about a month now. And there's there's a different flavor when you first open it than after the month. I've noticed it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it'll help me sleep like a baby is what it'll help me do tonight. Especially talking about the talcum powder on the nose and the baby. It's all I, I'm I'm ready for it. Now, uh, uh, what do you think when you add water? Mm, I haven't yet all this time. So let's do it with you. Oh, and I've even got this. I got this. That was. I got this as a gift probably three years ago. This has been my little water dropper. So it, it makes sense that Two Brewers was my first pick for the first barrel that I've ever chosen. And this is the very first one I've ever chosen. And I'm pretty happy with the results. So let's go water. I did about five drops in there. What do you think, Blair? With water? Yeah. I haven't done it yet either. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, it's more floral with the water. You know what? I'm gonna do it. No, do I'm it. not. No, you're not. <laughs> no, I don't have. I don't have water. I have to go run and get some. So I'll just get it. I'm gonna pretend. I'm gonna pretend I'm adding water just down here. All right. So, so the taste for you, Blair. What you getting? It's uh, there's there's some like roasted fruity notes coming out now for me, um, and I love the uh, that smoky oakiness uh, on the on the finish. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I find the peat. Yeah, I find the peat is not like it's not just smacking you around. It's it's 
all woven into the whole experience. So it's not, uh, cause I'm, I'm not, as you can tell, I'm not the biggest peat nut, but, um, yeah. I enjoy this a lot. Good stuff. I like good peat. I think that peat has been abused that's, by a lot well, of that's the thing. distillers in the last it's, few years. It's but, like the overly hoppy beers and the, yeah, it's just, and just yeah, blasting yeah. peat. Yeah. Yep. I'm getting something that tastes like canned peaches and maybe, you know, those, you know, those, um, those purple plums that have yellow, yellow flesh and you, yes. you break them in half. Like I, I, I'm getting some of that. Um, I find that the, the peat is more bad is more, it, it's nicely balanced with the sweetness. Um, um, uh, you know, the fruitiness is still in there, but it's less. But you know what? I diluted it down to twenty percent. Oh, okay. You know, to taste it, I've done that too to try to yeah. get all the notes out of it. Yeah. And twenty percent. I I know you don't like talking about balance, but at twenty percent, I found that it really was not uh, not balanced anymore. I found that the uh, the uh, sweetness really kind of overtook the fruit. The yeah. fruitiness and the floral flavors, and it was, um, it was, um, it, it, it wasn't as great as it was. Like some some whiskeys are fabulous at twenty percent, but this one okay. I think really was good at about forty six. I did a careful dilution earlier, okay. um, and the peat the peat at twenty percent, the peat just cuts through everything. So I, I think it's a great whiskey. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think you know they make a lot of great whiskey, like every yeah. one. But uh, I think it's great. I hope Andrew has a lot of these at Kensington Wine Market because I honestly, I'm going to recommend that people go to Kensington Wine Market and buy one or two. Don't be greedy, okay? Because a lot of people are going to want it. And uh, if you can mail order it, do it. But uh, yeah. I, there can't be that many left now. It's been out for a month. It but, has been, and I'm not sure. So yeah. I, I tried to get Andrew, uh, I tried to text him this morning, but he's, well, he's a busy guy. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah, he's so. very busy. Yeah, he's very busy. All right. We're at last comments on the nose, the taste, the finish, the whiskey itself. Anything, gentlemen, let's wrap it up. Blair, let's start with you, kind sir. Yeah, just get some. Whatever you can, whatever release you can, just try it. It's a uh, great distillery. <laughs> Cheers to the Alberta, Alberta Scotch Society. This is... Uh, you really, you really done good, and thank thanks you, to Dave. thanks to Dave for getting your good samples. Thanks to Dave for that. Thanks to Andrew Kingston Wine Market for helping me out on this, making sure that we had the rest covered. And thank you, gentlemen, for being here tonight with me because I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So, sure. cheers, everybody. Have a fantastic night, and we will see you next Tuesday, seven o'clock p.m. the regular time. Ciao, guys.